is Tuesday, June 20th, and this is the ADM Investor Services Weekly Market Kickoff. Please note that the views and opinions expressed today are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. Today's guests are Mark Soderberg, ADMIS Senior Ag Analyst, and Alan Bush, ADMIS Senior Financial Economist. Starting with the financial markets this morning, Alan, Fed Chair Powell will testify this week before the Congressional Committee what do you think he will likely say? So Powell will probably spend a lot of time explaining why the FOMC decided to pause its rate hike cycle after 10 consecutive increases. His testimony will probably be hawkish on balance, although he will probably say decisions going forward will be data dependent. Also, he'll probably get the usual question, uh, what will the Fed do at the upcoming meeting? As he was recently asked, we'll probably get that question again, and most likely he will repeat the answer, and that is that the Fed has n not made a decision on what they will do at the July 26th meeting. Yeah, Alan, last week the Fed Open Market Committee indicated that it may hike the Fed funds rate two more times this year, yet the financial futures indicate only one more hike in 2023. Why is this? So. The financial futures markets, yes, they are indicating that there is only one rate hike coming. The Fed, uh, according to their dot plot system, indicated that there could be uh, two rate hikes coming. So I think a lot of this was rhetoric. I think they were trying to maybe influence some of the markets, uh, potentially the uh, stock market or the, or the stock indexes. Uh, keep in mind that the Fed believes that higher equity prices are inflationary and they're they are right uh, they are inflationary so the fed does not want to see a, a higher stock market and possibly they may be uh, a bit hawkish in, in some of their rhetoric to address that situation lastly alan what potentially market movement reports and events are scheduled for this week other than fed charles uh, fed uh, Powell's testimony Okay, so yeah, yes, he's going to testify tomorrow at nine o'clock before the House uh, Financial Services Committee, and then uh, the following day before the Senate Banking Committee. Those are both nine o'clock testimonies. But as far as reports, on Thursday we'll have the May leading indicators guessed at down 0.7 percent, and then on Friday the June Purchasing Managers Manufacturing Index, and that is anticipated to be 48.5. But uh, the the major influences definitely are going to be what Powell has to say in his testimony. Mark, looking at the ag markets, how's the near-term weather shaping up for this year's corn and soybean crops? Got a little rain over the weekend. Yeah, the uh, weekend weather was a bit of a mixed bag. Some slightly better than expected rains fell across uh, areas of central Iowa, Missouri, and very western edge of Illinois. Uh, spotty rains elsewhere and mostly dry across the northern plains, most of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, uh, eastward into Indiana and Ohio. Uh, rains over the next week uh, are expected to be heaviest again in the southeast U.S. and the far western Corn Belt uh, up and across the northern plains. However, that does leave a wide section of the central Corn Belt, again, void of meaningful rain and as temperatures begin to warm up. Uh, longer range models, they're trying to be uh, a little bit wetter across some of these dry areas in the central uh, Midwest and the seven to 10 day outlook. Uh, as a high pressure ridge uh, currently across the deep south is expected to shift uh, west a little bit, which would possibly open up the Gulf to enable some rains uh, through these drier areas of the Midwest. Mark, later this afternoon, we get some fresh crop condition reports. Are we looking for a little stress out there? Yeah, I, I am. Uh, so far, the uh, saving grace for this year's corn and soybean crops has been a fact that uh, temperatures have been seasonally moderate in many of these flash drought areas of the Midwest. Intense heat has been limited to the deep south and in pockets there in the western Corn Belt uh, over this past weekend. However, good rains, again, are expected to fall in, in some of these areas that experience this heat uh, this week. Uh, that said, I do look for a 2 to 4 percent drop in good excellent and in, across the board in corn, soybeans, uh, and in spring wheat. Spring wheat is concerned. Uh, as far as price, um, I'm pretty confident we're going to avoid a disaster like we saw in 2012. That's uh, when corn yields were slashed 20% from the trendline estimates. Uh, if trendline, if, if 
current yield estimates can be, avoid falling more than 10 to, uh, 5 to 10 bushels per acre uh, from the current estimate of 181 and a half. Uh, I do think gains will be limited to that 625, 650 level in D's corn uh, versus last summer's contract high, very near uh, uh, 675. Uh, Got to remember, demand for corn has been very weak going into this price surge. So, uh, and also we got the second corn crop in, in Brazil currently being harvested. So, I think it just furthers the argument for higher stocks uh, from old crop uh, as a result of weaker demand numbers. Same thinking for no beans. We've got a lot of weather to go through yet before we get to their key productive stage. Uh, for now, I'd expect uh, gains on this weather rally to be limited to 14 to 14 and a quarter. Last remark, any changes in the speculative trade position in the ag markets? Yeah, uh, and in particular, no, the index funds. Um, uh, we've been talking about for, for months now the inverse relationship between interest rates uh, and their exposure uh, in the ag markets. Last week, uh, index funds were big buyers in the ag space, adding 38,000 contracts uh, to their portfolio. Uh, and so despite the Fed signaling perhaps that more rate hikes, hikes to come, uh, I, I sense we've seen a cyclical lull uh, with the index funds uh, with their position size here in the egg space. Thank you both. Remember, the views and opinions expressed today on this video are solely those of our guests and should not be construed as the views or opinions of ADM Investor Services or ADM. If you'd like more information about our brokered services, would like to speak to one of our experts about managing your risks, or would like to open a trading account, please visit www.admis.com.